Hi, this is Gwen for Tabby and another video about reading tarot and the Tree of Life. So why do we read tarot and the Tree of Life? Well, there's some very interesting history that is the ultimate answer to that question. But I think most tarot readers get interested in the Tree of Life because it's illustrated in some of the cards and not just in the Thoth Tarot, but it is more obvious in the Thoth Tarot. For example, in the Nine of Discs, you can see the six coins are, and they are arranged at, to represent the six sephiroth in the middle of the Tree of Life. And on this card in the coins, you can see, we know that that's what they are because there are little drawings on the inside to represent the, um, the energy, to represent what rules that sephira. So at the top you have Saturn and then you have Mars and Jupiter and then toward the bottom you have Venus and Mercury and then the Moon. We also have the Six of Swords. Each of the sword hilts here represent those same six Sephiroth. But it's really clear when you get to the Tens. You have the Ten of Cups. This looks like the Tree of Life. You have the Ten of Swords. And you have the Ten of Discs. But what about the Rider Waite Smith? Well, it's there too. And you've probably seen it in the Ten of Pentacles. You've probably seen the Tree of Life in that card, but, but it's also there in other cards, maybe not quite as explicit, but it's there. For example, in the Two of Cups, you see here that there's a man and he is reaching out to a woman who is accepting the approach, accepting his gesture. If you look at the Tree of Life, you see that we have two pillars. The one on the right is called the Masculine Pillar or the Pillar of Force. And the one on the left is called the feminine pillar or the pillar of form. And the man in this card is standing on the side of the masculine pillar and the woman is standing on the side of the feminine pillar. What happens with the energy on the tree of life is it goes back and forth just like this. It goes from Keter at the top to Hokma at the top of the masculine pillar and then across the path of the Empress to Bina, which is at the top of the pillar of form. So that's what's happening here, because the twos, we know that, because the twos reside in Chokmah, and that's where this energy starts. So the energy goes from the right to the left. And between them, when you're interpreting the card, what I would say is that something is created between them, because you have the caduceus of Mercury bringing magic, and you have the red lion of alchemy also bringing transformation. So it's about... You know, two people meeting, for example, but it's not just them meeting. It's about something else coming from it, something else being created, that magical alchemy that happens. On the Tree of Life, I think we could look at the Red Lion as being Keter and the Caduceus as being the beginning of the middle pillar. Um, because when these two come together, the, the main kind of aim of the tree of life, I guess you could say, is balance. And that's why it goes back and forth. It goes from the right to the left, to the right to the left, imbalancing in the middle as it goes. That's what it really wants to do. So the middle pillar is very important. And I think that the caduceus here is the beginning of that, showing the potential of this balance between the two cards. So I hope the two people. <laughs> so I hope that was interesting. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.